Hello everyone and welcome back to another video with On Point Politics and today we're going to be doing a breakdown of demographic modeling that I did for 2024 post Trump assassination attempt and we're going to see what the electoral map is looking like as of right now. Make sure to go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you guys want more content just like this and before we get started with the video. I would like to have a moment of silence for this entire week leading up till Saturday. Every single video we do, we are going to have a moment of silence for President Trump and his recovery, which he seems to be okay. And we are also going to have a moment of silence for Corey and his family. You know, Corey passed away at the Trump rally. He was a, a basically a bystander slash rally goer and two people are also seriously injured. So we are going to have a moment of silence for them right now. All right, guys, and we are now back to the video. And so pretty much as of right now, again, there's no new polling. There's nothing, you know, data factually that we have right now. But based off of previous polling, based off of the analysis that I already had, I am expecting Donald Trump to gain with a lot of Gen Z voters. I'm expecting him to gain with African-Americans after this. And I'm expecting him to gain a lot with hispanic voters as well he's also going to gain with white voters but i believe the, the i believe the minority groups are going to start shifting toward him a little bit more a lot of people that are in higher income brackets i also think are going to start shifting to trump as well as well as all you know economic you know groups in general so that's definitely going to play a factor into this and college educated voters i also think are going to swing to him as well and so I think right now things are going to get crazy and what I basically did is I modeled out one map for age, one map for education, one map for gender, one map for income, and one map for race and we basically get one singular map for the electoral college when you average it out and we're going to fill that out right now. So as of right now you have all the safe Republican states from the last cycle, all Nebraska except that district, you have you know the this is the deep south. Uh, you have Missouri. Kansas is also in it now. Alaska's in it. Indiana, West Virginia, Maine, second congressional district. Texas, Iowa, and Ohio are all 22 point victories right now. The state of Florida is a 19 point win for Donald Trump. The state of Georgia is just over a 15 point victory, a plus 15.6 margin for Donald Trump, which would be an absolutely insane result after this. State of North Carolina is a 16.4 percentage point margin of victory for the former president. We see state of Wisconsin is going to be a likely margin of victory. Now, before we do that, the safe states for the Democrats are Vermont, Massachusetts, Maryland, and DC. That's literally it. They only have the 27 safe electoral votes as of right now in their column. We also have the states of California and Hawaii at 12 point victories respectively. New York at just a seven point win for Joe Biden with Rhode Island and Connecticut being likely states on the map as well. For the likely Republican states, we have Michigan alongside Wisconsin, you know, 13 point victory in Wisconsin, 11 point victory in Michigan, you know, 13 points in Pennsylvania as well. We also have a 13 point win in Nevada, 14 points in Arizona. We also have have a likely victory in New Mexico of a five point win. Same thing in Virginia, Minnesota by seven, New Hampshire by six points. We have Maine at large by a decent amount as well. We're gonna fill that in. Nebraska second is also a likely margin of victory as well. That gives Donald Trump a very comfortable start in the electoral college going up to this as of right now. And we see states like Washington are a four point win, Oregon are a two point victory. We see Colorado actually flips to Trump. It's a 1.6 percentage point margin in the modeling. We see in Illinois, as of right now, it is a one and a half point victory for Joe Biden. In Delaware, it's actually like literally a 3.9 percentage point victory. And New Jersey is actually till Democrat with Maine at large being about a four and a half point victory for Donald Trump. And so we basically end up with Donald Trump getting 357 electoral college votes to Biden's 181. Now again, 
This is not an official prediction, but is merely to put in picture where I think certain states are going to be up for grabs. I genuinely think that these are going to be the states that are actually up for grabs as of right now. This is actually what we're looking at as the toss-ups for this election. Now, you could throw in Minnesota and New Hampshire in those. You could even throw New Mexico and Virginia in there, but Donald Trump has essentially expanded the electoral map. At this point, I think he takes Minnesota at this point. I also think he gets New Mexico too. I really do. I think he does, and I think he gets Virginia as well. So really, this is kind of an expanded battleground map uh, based off of this. I think Donald Trump has a lot of room to grow even after the assassination attempt. And to even prove this to you, we're going to go to the state of New York. State of New York, quite funny enough, when you model it out here, what's very fascinating is that the city margins actually had a poll that recently came out of the state of New York. For example, for Joe Biden in the Bronx, the margin was actually a 68 point victory. And we have the victory now, the poll only be a 27 point win for Joe Biden in the latest poll. We go to here, Queens, that goes down about 35 points there. We see Kings ends up being like a little bit closer. New York gets like 30 points closer. Richmond gets about 20 points more Republican. And in the New York districts of the 17th, the 19th, and 22nd district, which are all located here, there is internal polling, which has Biden down in all of these districts by double digits before the assassination attempt on President Trump. These were done before the assassination attempt. And Democrats have already been scrambling about the state of New York. They've already been scrambling about it. Because of the fact that they were telling Biden, yo, you need to pour resources into the state. It's going to be really close. And what happens is the districts that Biden won by double digits in 2020 are now double digit losses for him in internal polling. And these swing districts are supposed to be close on the House level. I mean, the Republicans narrowly won some of these districts back in 2022 when Zeldin lost by six. So if Joe Biden is down by double digits in certain districts, that is a really bad sign. So in order for me to basically play it fair, I applied a 20 point shift to the all these all these counties up here. And when you do that, it literally gives you a tilt margin for Joe Biden. The margin literally can be anywhere from Biden winning by half a point to Biden winning it by maybe six, maybe seven. That's kind of the range you're looking at in the state of New York. It is actually crazy to know. And that's assuming that the double digit losses are not over 15 points. I assumed that the districts basically went from Biden plus 10 to 15 to basically Trump plus 10 to 15. That's assuming a 20 point shift. And that's being generous. Because they didn't provide, uh, uh, provide official figures. But if the victories in some of these districts were over 10 and they're saying he's down by double digits, there's a minimum 20 point shift in some of these districts. And they're all in midsection New York. And you could even say that these counties up here may even shift even more Republican since they are more rural. And you see here, Donald Trump is in striking distance of literally winning the state of New York. So for those people who want to say, oh, you're crazy, there's no way it's impossible, I mean, it's going to be a low chance for Trump to win it. But there is a reason why Democrats are freaking out about the state of New York. They have a legitimate reason because it, it really is in play. I genuinely think that when polling comes out, the state will be a five-point race, a four-three-point race. I genuinely think it's going to come down to the wire. And if he's doing this good in New York... Who's to say that Trump is going to lose in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania? At that point, it would be impossible for him to lose there if he's only losing New York by one to five points. So that just goes to show that having this as a toss-up map really is not that unrealistic. And honestly, if he's coming within striking distance of winning New York, Illinois has to be seriously questioned. We have not had new polling data from the state of Illinois since October, and that showed Biden leading a poll by eight. And that was back in October, guys, before anything happened this year. So there is something going on. I would even put the state of Hawaii 
in the toss-up category as of right now because we see a poll that has Biden up by eight there. The polling is competitive compared to past elections. It's been trending to the right. And on top of that, the polling years in Hawaii always overestimate Democrats by quite a bit. So there are some serious questions like states about Hawaii with high third-party turnout. Colorado, there is a serious question there. Illinois, New Jersey, New York, New Jersey, Oregon. There are serious questions to actually be posed about some of these states. It is actually insane, guys. It is crazy. It is actually nuts, guys. And so this is why people are freaking out. This is why people are freaking out about Joe Biden being the nominee. And just to let you guys know, at this point, any other Democrat would probably do worse than Joe Biden. That's what national polling aggregates suggest would be the case. So Donald Trump has the ability to go out there. Now, please do not get complacent. Please do not not go vote. Please don't sit out the election. This is merely just based off my already projected results, looking into the future, basically assuming that Trump is going to gain support from this, which it seems like he is. That is the consensus with uh, basically the people I've been talking to. Gold Crown, Connor K, everybody. Well, everyone I talk to, we have a consensus that Trump will gain support from this in polling data. Now, how many points? We're not sure. And again, I'm not saying it's guaranteed he's going to win Illinois, New York, or New Jersey, or Colorado. But they are seriously in question here. They are seriously toss-up states this cycle. I wouldn't even consider Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania toss-ups anymore right now. I wouldn't even consider those toss-ups. Donald Trump is going into this election with a really great advantage in the Electoral College. And we need to fight. You know, this is my personal opinion now. We need to fight to get this victory for Trump. You need to go out and vote. In a month from now, early party voting starts in Florida for me on August 10th. I'm going to go vote on August 10th in person for President Trump. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to vote for Trump. And it is what it is. And we're four months out of the election, guys. We're four months away. And the Republican National Convention is tomorrow. So he needs to, he, he can gain even more points after the RNC, after the VP pick, which presumably would be tomorrow. So guys, there is serious questions about this being a potential big landslide for Trump. If you guys did enjoy this video, please make sure to hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you want more content just like this. Make sure to go ahead and follow the Twitter and join the Discord server in the description down below. Make sure to go ahead and donate to the Michigan and Pennsylvania poll crowdfunding. We are poll basically crowdfunding for a poll that we want to conduct in these two states. So any support would be greatly appreciated. And I will see you guys in the next video.